My name's Amita Farida. I'm one of the children's doctors, one of the specialty registrars, and I've been asked to have a look at uh, Luca's abdomen. Hello, Luca. Hello. How are you? Um, is it okay if I can yeah, uh, examine his tummy? Yeah, Perfect. Um, is Luca, are you in any pain today? Yeah. Do you need to go to the toilet? Yeah. Excellent. Good. And how old are you? I'm 11 years old. You're 11. Excellent. So what does that mean that you're in year six at school? Yeah. How did I guess? Brilliant. Now, firstly, Luca, could I get you to take your top off for me? And if mummy could give you a hand, if we could have your, um, if we could have your trousers off. Yes, please. Um, and could you take the trousers off as well? Just leaving the, the underwear on, that's perfect. You're not too cold, are you, Luca? Do you want... We've got a blanket here if you Good need boy. it. Do you want a blanket? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, sorry. Okay, perfect. Firstly, Luca, can I have a look at your hands? For yes. Brilliant. And your other hand. And can you go like this for me? As if you were stopping the traffic lights. Like that. Brilliant. Excellent. I'm just going to feel your pulse. And can I get you to look that way, over there? And just lie back for me. Put your head right back. Perfect. And I'm just going to have a feel under your arms. Are you ticklish? Very, very <laughs> Excellent. Especially my feet part. Oh, I won't tickle there. Then. <laughs> and can you look up for me? I don't like the view. Oh, well, can you do that for me then? This is that's that's better. Yeah, a little bit further down. I can't do. Oh, anything. that's okay. Don't worry. That's all right. And can you open your mouth and go ah? Ah. Perfect. Excellent. Good. And is it okay if you just sit forward for me? I'm just gonna have a feel your neck. Okay. I'm going to have a look at your back. Oh, I can see a couple of scars down there. Okay, good. And do you want to lie down? And I'm going to find a way to try and get this bed flat. I don't know if mum could help me. Oh, um, yeah, they perfect. Is that okay? Yeah. Let me know if you're not comfortable. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to press your tummy if that's okay. Is there anywhere that hurts? For a while, I'll make sure I won't go near there. I'll be very gentle. Oh, sorry. I'm going to press a bit more firmly, okay? Oh, that's a nice one. Actually, my peg's on there. Oh, sorry. Won't go near there. Good. Okay. Now I'm just going to feel here. There. Okay, sorry. I do apologise. <laughs> now, I'm going to tap on your tummy, okay? Um, but before I tap on your tummy, I want you to breathe in and out for me. And again. Okay, same thing again. Breathe in and out for me. Now, a bit of tapping. That gives me a strange belt. Oh, does it? Oh, don't worry about that. Okay, that is a bit too high. It's a bit too high? just going to have a little uh, listen, if that's okay. Okay. I'm just going to listen if around the back as well. If you hear like, if you hear like, 
Oh, okay, yeah, I could hear, I could hear your tummy gurgling away. Yeah. Can I have a look at your legs? Ah, oh, they sound very tasty. I just had a chocolate biscuit for mm -hmm. my I can see your nails. Can I have a look at the soles of your feet? Fantastic. Great. Shall I cover you up? Okay, would you like to present your findings, please? Sure. So I examined Luca's abdomen. He's an 11-year-old boy. He appears small um, for uh, his age in, in terms of uh, waist and height, so like spot light on the growth chart. Mm -hmm. um, on examination, he had clinical findings consistent with uh, a child with chronic renal disease who was on hemodialysis, mm -hmm. um, as evidenced by um, a double lumen central venous catheter um, and uh, bilateral transverse scars on his back in the renal area that could be consistent with um, nephrectomy scars. Yes. Um, in addition, he also has a, a peg um, site on his abdomen. Um, and I, I did note that he did have um, bilateral uh, toenails, which appeared hyper <coughs> hypertrophied with Bose lines on them, possibly suggestive of some form of, of, of chronic um, inflammation, um, possibly associated with chronic uh, renal disease as well. Um, so um, my differential um, diagnosis would be uh, renal failure um, requiring hemodialysis um, and bilateral nephrectomy. Mm -hmm. There is a whole range of uh, conditions that could lead to this, which include congenital anomalies such as multicystic dysplastic kidneys, mm -hmm. polycystic kidneys, uh, pos posterior urethral valve uh, requiring nephrectomy, um, or uh, a gl glomerulonephritis um, as well. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like to do in your examination that you weren't able to do? Um, I'd like to um, check your blood pressure. I'd like to do a urine dip. I'd like to um, check your external uh, genitalia as mm -hmm. well. Okay. Now, you can see that he uh, has a permacatheter, which is mm -hmm. correctly identified mm -hmm. for, for hemodialysis. Mm -hmm. How would you know if this child needs hemodialysis today? In terms of if, if he was due to have a... Um, yes. I mean, are there any signs that you'd look for that would suggest that he's actually needing hemodialysis straight away? Um, straight away. So, uh, for instance, if there was evidence of, of volume overload, um, if there was breathlessness, uh, ascites, um, if there was um, uh, evidence of pulmonary edema um, and crackles at, crackles at the bases. Um, in addition, if there were kind of uh, sign, clinical signs of uh, hyperuremia, if, there was, if he was con confused, for instance, or, or very peripheric. Okay. Now, you've, you've seen that he's had both of his kidneys mm -hmm. taken out. Um, why would you want to do that? Um, so, indications would include um, congenital disorders such as non-cystic dysplastic kidneys where uh, there's a risk of, of infection uh, there, especially if there's an incomplete involution of, of the kidneys. Yeah. Um, in addition, um, as a bridge to, if, if there's been a transplant in the past, um, then nephrectomy can be used uh, to create kind of more anatomical space as well. Um, and, and in, in terms of uh, risk of infection, when, you've, when you have structurally abnormal kidneys and recurrent urinary tract infection, mm -hmm. then that, that, is a, that is an indication for um, nephrectomy. Okay. okay. Um, now, how would you plan to manage this patient going forward from here? Um, I'd like to um, consider kind of biological, um, psychological and social factors and include the multidisciplinary team. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the management of his um, chronic renal uh, disorder, because we're uncertain of the, the etiology, I'd want to do um, a full set of, kind of baseline investigations, um, including uh, renal function, uh, vitamin D, mm -hmm. parathyroid, uh, an FBC, uh, ery erythropoietin levels um, as well. I would like to um, check blood pressure um, have a look at his uh, urine protein creatinine ratio. Um, I'd like to um, image the kidneys as well with, with ultrasounds, possi yeah. possibly um, use of um, uh, Dopplers or um, uh, MRI angiography if necessary, okay. depending on the underlying etiology. Um, I, depending on the, the history, uh, I may want to consider um, autoimmune causes um, uh, for an underlying glomerulonephritis. Yeah. So, 
including investigations such as ANA, ANCA, um, CPC4, AF18, um, but they would, that would be guided by the history. Um, in terms of kind of the, the management side, I'd like to involve a, a consultant nephrologist at the tertiary centre. Uh, I'd like to involve a, a local uh, paediatrician in a, in a district general hospital, a nephrology specialist nurse. Um, management will be guided, uh, and possibly a paediatric urologist as well. Um, management will be guided by um, the underlying uh, etiology of the kidney disorder, but um, would involve um, immunosuppression in the context of glomerular nephritis, um, renal replacement therapy such as dialysis or transplants, uh, if there is uh, renal pathology that can't be uh, reversed, um, and also um, supplementation of uh, hemoglobin, possibly using erythropoietin, yeah. and um, consideration of endocrine complications such as uh, hypercalcemia by, by monitoring of, of calcium and uh, parathyroid hormone. Um, in addition with growth, uh, chronic renal, renal failure is, um, and poor growth is an indication for growth hormone, mm -hmm. um, so possibly involving a paediatric endocrinologist as well. I'm afraid we have to finish there. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Yeah, the first candidate was very good, actually. I particularly enjoyed the way that he took command of the situation. He looked like a doctor. He looked in control of the situation. He was very good with the mum and uh, the child as well. Um, he conducted a, a very thorough, by the textbook, um, examination of the abdomen, and uh, that worked very well. Uh, there were a few things that perhaps I'd have liked slightly differently, because quite early on he worked out this was a renal examination from the uh, permacath, uh, that was situated um, on the chest and also from the nephrectomy scars. And uh, nephrectomy usually means the kidney's been taken out. So the big question for me was really, does this child need dialysis? Is there another kidney in there somewhere? Um, and actually, how's the child managing uh, w without that? Another question might be, well, what, what were the kidneys taken out for? Um, now, of course, you could get that on history, but there might be things you could see on examination um, as well. So... Um, you know, there were a few comments a little bit later on about you know, the urine. Obviously, there's no urine, there's no kidneys at the moment. Uh, I think a more thorough examination, perhaps, of the groin, which is where a, uh, a new kidney might be placed back in, might have been appropriate there. Perhaps he quite quickly worked out there was no scar there, but I didn't really get the impression that he was looking for that specifically. Um, moving on, you know, looking at the abdomen, it's very important uh, as... as uh, in general inspection uh, rather than immediately going in and starting to feel that. And that's something you can do in an examination and in real life as well. It's actually spend a bit of time really closely studying the abdomen, seeing how it moves, looking for asymmetry as well. Um, so that's something that I would advise him to do next time. Perhaps the last thing is uh, specifically offer to measure the blood pressure, which I had to actually ask the candidate if he would be interested in doing that later on um, because uh, obviously that's such an important thing in uh, the assessment of the kidneys and also looking for a peripheral edema and sacral edema as well. But overall, I thought he was a really good candidate. His questions were really um, answered very well at the end. He presented a really neat summary. I'd be you know, proud to have him as my registrar and uh, so it'd be a very easy pass.